This video is part of a tutorial on Simulink data type propagation. This is a collection of videos. This is the last one, kind of a bonus one on data type propagation. We are have explained various parts of how Simulink does data type propagation, how the engine does it. And in this one, we'll just explain some of the common rules that are used by blocks. It's Again, this video is not really about explaining blocks, but explaining these few cases and how they do propagation for these rules can help reinforce the general understanding of Simulink Engine. So we'll talk about four common simple cases for in data type inheritance rules. One is inherit via back propagation. And what this means is that they block, the output of the block will accept any numeric data type. There is no additional propagation back to the input ports. That's a common misunderstanding. It is not true. Basically, that data type for the output is set and no additional data types are set, just the output type. Inherit via auto is similar in that it accepts any data type but it is most commonly used on blocks that are close to being just a signal, a signal connection, such as an input port, an output port, or a signal specification block. The block doesn't really do calculations or operations. It's more like you're specifying the attributes of the signal. And auto just says, I'll take whatever comes my way, not only numeric types, but bus types and so forth. Um, Another rule is inherit same as first input. Blocks that have this will typically accept any numeric data type. Once the output data type is known, it will immediately go and set the first input data type, input port to that same data type, or in the opposite direction, if the first input is known, it'll set the output immediately to that same type. And then there's also require all inputs to have the same data type. So this will accept any numeric data type for the, for the ports. And then once it knows one input port's data type, it'll set all the other input ports to have the same data type right away. OK, let's show an example of this. OK, so here we have a model where we have lots of blocks that need to have data types. In this upper half, let's focus on that. Mo all these input ports, most of them are set to auto, so they're just going to accept whatever comes their way. Two of them, this sixth one, in 6 is set to be an int 16, and in 3 is set to be in 32. Now for the sum block, it says that it wants to inherit its output the same as the first input. Okay, And then this product block is set to inherit via back propagation. And we also have this data type conversion block is also set to inherit via back propagation. So let's go ahead and update diagram on this and see what's going to happen. From just a few known data types, there was this one, this one, and also this down here has a fixed point, 32-bit fixed point type with 18 bits to the right of the binary point. Let's see what happens and then we'll try to explain how all the types got set on this model. So we're seeing that all four inputs have an int32. And the output also has an int32. Well, let's open up that block and look at how it's set. So the output data type is set to be the same as the first input, and it has require all inputs to have the same data type. So as we saw in the previous videos, what's going to happen is this data type was known. This will set it at initialize time. The rest of these are inherited. And then Simulink Engine will propagate this information to this block and say, hey, your third input port is proposed to have int32. What this block did was it says, okay, I accept that. And then it looked at its parameter and says, oh, 
All my input ports are supposed to have the same data type. Okay, so I'll set first, second, and fourth to also have in 32. And then it says, oh, I'm also supposed to have my output data type be the same as my first input. So it will then also propagate that information from here to the output. And then that is known. Okay. So that's how that block got set. Now down here on this block, this type was known to be int 16, but this was just inherited. So how did he get its type? Well, Simulink Engine propagated that information from here to the product block. And then in the product block, it says, oh, I'm required to have all my input ports be the same data type. So it immediately set, once it knew this port was in 16, it immediately set that port to also be in 16. And so that sort of propagated in and then back through this block. Now the output is set to inherit via back propagation. So that means there's no connection whatsoever between the types on the input and the type on the output. They're completely decoupled and independent in terms of what data type gets set. The math will need to work out and account for that when it's doing calculations, but as far as what type is used, there's no connection that between the output and the input. So that's what inherit via backpropagation means. And what's going to happen is that the data type from, that got set when this propagated to N32, Simulink Engine will come and say, hey, let me propagate that further. This vector concatenate block always starts out saying that all ports are, have unknown data type. Now, there's no choice on here about data type propagation because this block has one and only one mode, and that is all ports must be homogeneous with regard to type. So every port must have the same data type. So the minute in 32 came and was proposed to this block, it immediately said, oh, the output port must be in 32 and other input ports must be in 32. So that became known. Now this was known here and now this information propagated backwards along this wire to this block. That's what inherit via back propagation means. It flowed from here, this vector concatenate, back to the propagation block and then the prop, product, product block sorry, accepted in 32 and it was done. So the back propagation was from here back to here. But there is no propagation through the block back to the input ports. That's a common misunderstanding. Heard via back propagation is just from the upstream block back to here and then it stops. Okay. Now over here in this block, data type propagation set this type, uh, sorry, the initialization phase set this data type from the import. Simulink Engine propagated that here to the conversion block on its import, and he accepted it because it was an numeric type. That also then was, it was also propagated to this block. And this block is uh, basically, if we look under the mask, Oh, it's not under the mask. What is this? Oh, this is just, there's no mask. This is basically just the data type propagation block, which allows you to create your own data type propagation rules. And so the information that this was thir signed 32 bits, 18 bits, the right of the binary point came into here. This was set up in a way that it would take half the bits, so 16 instead of 32, same signedness. And then it said, I'm only going to keep the most significant bits. So out of the 18 bits that were the right of the binary point, 16 of them were dropped. Half of them were dropped. So in, in the end, there were only two bits to the right of the binary point. And so this propagated to here. And this one is set to inherit via back propagation. So again, the information flowed into here and then back through here. And then it came to the port and says, I'll accept that. So the inherit via back propagation, one of the powers of it is that it allows you to set up fancy customization rules for propagation, such as if you look at this library, which is, these are basically all just using data type propagation or data type duplication blocks to do various uh, fancy rules. And you can, so this allows you to customize what sort of propagation you get. 
You can also minimize duplication of entry via, by using inherit via backpropagation as we did here. We know the vector concatenation has to have homogeneous rules, and we could specify both of these to be exactly the same, explicitly saying it was in 32, but if we wanted to change that in the future, then we'd have to go back to a bunch of places and change it again. Uh, so since we know this is going to propagate back like this, we can just set this to inherit via back propagation and we minimize our specification burden should we want to change things. Okay, so that's how that worked. And again, to review, we gave some examples of inheritance rules that are common on each blocks. And we use that to reinforce our understanding of how Simulink Engine propagates information. And then we also mentioned the power of inherit via back propagation to minimize specification burden or to combine it with blocks like these to create your own custom propagation rules. Okay, thank you.